In this video, we continue to look at CTEC physics past paper questions. Now we'll be looking at the question from January 2017, paper 2, question 4. And this question deals with um, light um, and uh, refraction and so on, right? Now, part A of part A, um, I of the question says, state two examples of observations which provide evidence that light can be refracted, right? Um, the two most evident observations are one, um, a, 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 a straw or a pen or a pencil in a drinking glass appearing to be bent, right? So if you have a glass of water and you put a, a pen or a pencil in the glass and you look at it, it appears to be bent. And of course, that is due to refraction. Um, also, um, pools appear to be shallower than they actually are due to refraction. So if, for instance, an object is at the bottom of the pool and you look at it, it appears to be closer to you or close to the surface than it really is. And that is due to refraction taking place, right? So those are two observations which provide evidence that light can be refracted. Good? Now, part two, figure three shows a ray of light um, traveling from air to water. So this is basically the diagram um, as, as given in the question, right? Um, so figure three shows a ray of light traveling from air to water. The question goes on to say, as the light ray travels from air to water, determine if the speed of light ray will increase or decrease. Give a reason for your response. So basically what we have here is a ray of light traveling from air into water. We can actually go ahead and draw a little normal at a point of incidence and actually continue to show the path of the, of the ray of light as it enters the water, right? So if it goes from air into water, it will be refracted towards the normal, right? It will be refracted towards the normal. So if this is our angle of incidence I and this is our angle of refraction R, then the angle of incidence I would be greater than the angle of refraction R, right? So generally, when light travels from a less dense medium into a denser medium, the speed decreases and it is refracted towards normal. So once again, if light is traveling from air into water, water of course is much denser than air and therefore the speed of light will actually decrease. So generally, light travels slowest in denser materials as opposed to in less dense materials. So therefore, when light is traveling from air into water, the speed, of course, will decrease. And as we should know, um, the speed of light in air is approximately 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is roughly the same as the speed of light in a vacuum. So therefore, when light is traveling in any material medium, its speed will always be less than the value in air or the value in a vacuum. So that's part three of part A. Um, B, a glass prism as shown in figure four may be used to produce a spectrum. So we have um, a glass, glass prism and we have incident white light onto one face of the prism, right? Um, part one of B says, what is the name of the effect that um, <laughs> is created? So um, once again, a glass prism as shown in figure four may be used to produce a spectrum. And what is the name of the effect that is created? This effect is called dispersion, right? So whenever white light is actually separated into its constituent colors into the spectrum, um, then that effect is called dispersion. So the, 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 the prism is said to have dispersed white light into its constituent colors. Um, part two, on the figure above, Trace a path of the white light into and out of the prism, indicating the red ray and the violet ray, right? Now, we know that the colors of the visible spectrum are the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, or Roy G. Biv. And they basically want us to show these or show the two colors, red and violet, whereas as, as the, the white light is basically split into its constituent colors, right? So... I'll probably try to use um, a red marker and a blue marker to show the um, to show the effect of those two colors, right? So of course we know that different colors of light, which of course have different frequencies, don't necessarily travel at the same speed in a particular material medium, and this of course is what is responsible for the different degrees of refraction when they travel, say, in a glass prism, and the different amounts by which the, 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 the different colors are deviated, right? And essentially, this is what allows white light to be separated into its constituent colors by a glass prism. 
So if we have trace a path of red light, it will be refracted um, this direction like so. Then it will be refracted like that on exiting. Um, violet will be like down here a little bit. Right? So something like that. And of course, in between these two, we have the, red, the other colors, um, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, and the, and the violet, and so on, right? So this, of course, would be red. Right, so of course, well, clearly this is, this is red. And this is violet, and in between you have the orange, the yellow, the green, and so on, right? So this is basically what happens when white light is dispersed by a glass prism. All right, so that is part two of part B. Now part C, an experiment was conducted to verify Snell's law of refraction by measuring the angle of incidence I and the angle of refraction R for a light ray in entering a glass block. The data was recorded and, as, and recorded as shown in table two. So here we have table two. So table two basically shows the angles of incidence, 30 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, and the angles of refraction, corresponding angles of refraction, 20 degrees, 31 degrees, 35 degrees, and so on. A few spaces, of course, are missing, and they basically want us to fill in those empty spaces. So determine the angle of refraction. No, all right. So complete table two by filling or by inserting the missing values. So if you look here, then the corresponding, the sine I of 50 degrees, sine of 50 degrees is missing. So if we go to our calculator, so sine 50 degrees, that is 0 0.77 correct to two decimal places. So we'll just circle it to indicate, um, to differentiate from one, one of those that was already there. Um, this value is missing. The, the, the angle of refraction is 20 degrees and therefore sine of 20 is 0.34 correct to two decimal places, right? And of course, we're expected to complete this column as well by finding the ratio of sine i over sine r, right? So if you go ahead and do this, so sine i divided by sine r, so we should have 0.77 divided by 0.52, That gives us 1.48. And of course, um, this value, 0.87 divided by 0.57. That gives us 1.53. Right? So we see that the, 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 the ratios of sine i over sine r are not exactly the same, but they're pretty much, they're, they're kind of close, right? They're, 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 pretty, they're pretty close. Right? Good. So, having completed the table, says, determine the angle of refraction if an angle of, if an angle of 70 degrees was recorded for this experiment. Use the refractive index of glass as 1.52. So we're given a particular angle of incidence and the refractive index to use, and of course we want to determine the angle, the, the angle of angle of refraction. So we know that um, this experiment is basically done to verify verify Snell's law, right? And according to Snell's law, the sine of the angle of incidence or the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to a constant, which is equal to refractive index. So sine i over sine r is equal to the refractive index n. So given that we have the angle of incidence of 70 degrees, so we have sine 70, and we need to find the angle of refraction, and that is equal to the refractive index we're given as 1.52. So we could put that over 1, right? So um, the, we go to a calculator, sine of 70 degrees, So that is 0.94, correct to two decimal places. 
So 0.94 over sine r is equal to 1.52 over 1. If we then cross multiply, right, so we cross multiply the denominator of one fraction multiplied by the numerator of the other fraction. So we have 1.52 sine r is equal to 1 times 0.94, which is simply 0.94. Then we divide by 0 0.5, divide through by 0.52. So we have sine r is equal to 0.94 divided by 1.52, so sine r is equal to, so divided by 1.52, that is 0.62, and therefore r is equal to the sine inverse of 0.62, and this gives us second function sine, second function answer, that is approximately 38.2 degrees. Right, so 38.2 degrees or 38 to the nearest degree. Right, so that would be the corresponding angle of refraction for um, an angle of incidence passing through glass um, of refractive index 1.52.